Recently, I was asked what I do with all this goat milk. And as you can see here, I have some of the things that I do with my goat milk. I just strained this milk. I need to get it out into my, our mercantile. This milk here is actually already spoken for. I have people that regularly get my milk almost on a daily basis. And so I just every day milk, get it in the jars and get it out into the mercantile and, and ready for them to pick up when they, when they stop by. I also make mozzarella. So this is the last of the mozzarella that I have right now because it is so delicious. I love it. It goes, it melts so well. I actually just use it like a hard cheese, like, cause it is hard, but <laughs> I actually just slice it and put some salt on it. If I have some crackers, I add it with that. I eat it with that and it is so good. Uh, so, you know, mozzarella has become a very favorite of mine because it's fast, it's easy to make, and it's good. It can be used on sandwiches, it can be melted on things, it can be added um, to dishes of just the things we're cooking, and I can just be sliced up and eaten. So, it's really good. Here is my yogurt. I just made this yogurt. I'm making a lot more yogurt recently because I'll show you. <laughs> I'm making a lot more yogurt now because I am actually starting to soak our breads that we make, crackers, breads, things like that, with either yogurt, buttermilk, uh, and or things like that. But a lot of times it's it's yogurt. So overnight I soak this, and I actually have three separate breads over here that I'm soaking for the different things for this week, and and crackers. Uh, so. That's another use as far as cooking goes of what I'm using the milk for and the yogurt specifically. So that is a little extra work in the sense of it takes more preparation and forethought. You have to think ahead of what, what in the world are we having? And you gotta plan ahead because you want it to soak for 12 to 24 hours. Usually I'm putting this, the, the yogurt in the flour the night before and then sometime within the next day I'm making whatever it is that I'm making so there you go as you can see here I also have this fancy dancy little thing it's actually a strainer and so inside here I put the yogurt it's strained out some of the thinner yogurt because yogurt that you make at home is different than store-bought yogurt there's a whole different process for one, this actually is raw yogurt, and, and so it's just a little differently. It's not going to be thick like you find at the store. So I have it straining in this right now. You can see a little bit of the whey down below that has separated a little bit of yogurt as well on the bottom. And up above here is actually cream cheese. <laughs> so I am getting this information and the things like the soaking of the breads and this cream cheese, all of that from this Nourishing Traditions book. So most likely you know about this book, most likely it's on your shelves and probably most likely you are using the recipes in this or following just the nourishing recipes and ways of this book. I, I wouldn't be surprised anyway. If you're not, definitely pick this up. We need to change the way we eat. We need to change the way we're taking care of our bodies and our health. And I really believe that this is a good step in the right direction. And, and I'm amazed at how many people are using information in this book. So I just think this is fabulous and wonderful information. So this is the cream cheese that we'll be using in recipes that, that call for cream cheese. Because the cream cheese that you get at the store, it's put under immense amounts of pressure, and the way they put it together, it really does not preserve the, the good bacteria, lacto-wonderfulness that is happening in these real food products. And so this will again be different than store-bought cream cheese, but it's healthier and can be used in the same way. So that's another way that we use it. But the thing that I wanted to share with you today is something new we've been doing with our goat milk, specifically our goat yogurt. And it is so, so good. Let me share it with you. I'll be right back though, because we need to get through school before I can show you. Hang on. You don't know that I'm back, but I'm back. <laughs> 
my camera battery died and it took a long time for it to charge and in the meantime we had to do school and get through all of that before I could get back to this. So it's now mid-afternoon. Behind me here I had to, while the kids were doing school in the bits and pieces of time that I can step away for a moment, I was working on the crackers. So behind here I've, I've got some crackers that I rolled out that I still need to cut up and get in the oven. But I'm still gonna show you my lovely yummy treat. It is so good and I can't wait to share it with you. Behind me here I've got some uh, deer meat, some deer broth, and some, what else? Oh, some pumpkin that I canned up that needs to find a home in the basement. My shelves are completely full. I need to build some new shelves and get them down there. But right now they're taking up counter space, which isn't optimal. <laughs> but this last month we splurged on a family gift. And you know, you get, you see those things, they come up and you think, oh, I don't know, is that gonna be worth it? Is that gonna be good? And I can tell you, this one is a fun one. We've enjoyed it. All right, this is what I got our family. Oh, it looks like just a little kind of a bowl thing. What's so special about this? Well, it is, has some sort of a liquid in here. You put it in the freezer flat and it freezes. And then you can put all kinds of yummy things on it. We've made ice cream from the goat milk. But I'm telling you, this is a game changer for yogurt. We make our yogurt and mix it, mix in it usually honey, some vanilla, and a spoonful of some sort of yummy jam, like peaches is our absolute favorite. I make peach jam, and then we do a spoonful of that in the yogurt, mix it all up, and now we put it on this. So, <laughs> I will show you how we do it and what it looks like afterwards, and then I'm going to enjoy eating it. The kids couldn't wait to get outside after uh, the d day of school, and so I'm going to be able to eat a treat in peace and quiet. <laughs> That'll be the, the other wonderful miracle in this. My lovely ladle here. For us, I usually do one ladle full of yogurt. This is, we've already used quite a bit of this. Do a good spoonful of that. Like that. A mouthful mix. Now, all I'm gonna do is add it to the cold plate. This little scraper spatula came with it. I'm gonna spread it as flat as possible around in here. So as you can see, this yogurt is, is different than store-bought yogurt. And it's as simple as that. I will say it's not absolutely perfect though. So we have found that with the four of us in the home, if we whether we're making ice cream or yogurt, that it actually gets warm pretty quickly. That that whatever's frozen under there gets actually warm or warmer and it doesn't freeze as quickly the more batches that you put on there. Technically it says that it will do six batches in a half an hour but we found that by the fourth it's really slowed down in the freezing process. But that doesn't mean it's any less good. Usually I'm the last one and I make mine the very last and I just let it sit on there while I'm cleaning up or I go do something else or I help the kids or whatever it is that we're doing at that moment. And so it really just takes longer um, and so it really hasn't been a problem but I know that that was one of the complaints that I read and and it is true that it um, it isn't perfect but it's lovely though we have really been enjoying it this I think with the yogurt turns our yummy yogurt top-notch into an absolutely delectable treat because it's a frozen yogurt and it's a little more solid I guess it's just extra cold and extra yummy and and we really enjoyed it and i think you know if you have something have some extra money in your budget it's something that you can put on your wish list and uh, maybe for a birthday or next christmas you can can get it in your own home and start using it so i just wanted to share that with you and let you know just how good this is so these are my crackers while that's freezing 
I'm finishing my crackers. There's nothing too fancy about them. Uh, so they're just, I'm cutting them into little like rectangles and putting them over here. But these were soaked with yogurt. The wheat was before. So uh, just soaking it overnight and now I'm finishing it up. So I have an affinity for salty, crunchy things. And you know, when you look at the wonderful ingredients of store-bought crackers or even chips, you wonder, well, what is really in this? Or you see the list and you know what's in it and you think, you know, that's not the best for me. So making your own crackers is what you do, I guess. <laughs> Taking the time to do all of this, it does take time, it takes effort, it takes poor planning, and I'm not the best at that, <laughs> but it's worth it. And we're really trying to kind of take control of our health this year a little better, and, and our kids as well. You know, there's so much going around sickness-wise and all the stuff that's happening. And we really want to make an effort to just be healthy, be healthier. And this is part of it. And I'm so thankful that my goat milk, my early mornings in the goat barn when it's freezing cold, I am so glad that it can actually provide for our family healthy food and we can use it in so many ways. I should say maybe, if you're interested and curious, I did use my little pasta maker here. It's, it rolls, it's called the Pasta Queen. And I rolled out my crackers through this and to make them as thin as possible because there's nothing like a thin and crispy cracker that goes crunch, right? <laughs> Am I the only one that likes a thin and crispy cracker? Yeah, so that worked well. All right, I think it's time to check the, the yogurt to see how it's doing. But for the most part, this is completely solid. And so now I am just going to push from the sides. You can see it just kind of pops up in like that. And then I will flip it. I flip it over, flipper. You can see this is completely solid here. Oh, I can't wait. Looks so good. Well, I said that I was going to have a nice treat, a nice, peaceful, quiet treat, and all by myself, but Bill came in and caught me. So now I've got to decide if I'm going to share or not. No comment. <laughs> so as you can see, I got some frozen yogurt and it is so good. Yum yum. Thank you goats for the milk. Hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Well, it's just so good I couldn't not share. So he enjoyed some too.